FOMO is a very real and dangerous thing when having a video game collection. There are so many different ways you can fall into the trap of fear of missing out, which of course is what FOMO stands for. The biggest one is of course new games. I've done a video about this fairly recently where I said the reason I don't buy new games is because they're very expensive. I'm not saying they're not worth it, but when you collect video games, you are more than likely sitting on a stack of games that you're waiting to play anyway, so why do you need to rush out and buy the new release? So if you have patience and you have restraint, you can sidestep this side of FOMO and not buy the new release, go play something older, wait for that new release to become a little bit older, drop down in price, and then you can pull the trigger and pick it up. But of course, there are a whole host of other ways you can fall into the trap of FOMO without even realizing. One of my favorite places to pick up video games right now is Vinted. I'm no stranger to that website, and I often talk about it in my series, which is linked in the description. See over there, I like to build a video game collection without spending any money out of pocket, and I feel like Vinted is a very good place to go. Not only do you have insanely good deals, but you can sit on the sofa while watching your favorite TV show while just browsing the app, and if something pops up, you can pull the trigger, you can be sat in the warm, cup of tea, TV show, no need to be in a field looking through someone's car boot. But the issue that I find personally with these type of places, Vinted, eBay, kind of Facebook to a certain extent, is that it's just too easy. And I don't mean, oh, it's too easy for me to find good deals and I'm surrounded by incredible games that didn't cost me anything, although to be fair, I am, but that's not my point. My point is, I see a game pop up, three or four quid cheaper than CEX, and I think, wow, that's a good deal. It's too easy for me to click buy. So if you're sat there with 20 quid and you're thinking, right, I've got 20 quid, maybe it's in your Vinted account, you've just sold something, or maybe you've got 20 quid in your bank, maybe you're doing that free collection and you've managed to build up 20 pounds worth of profit that you can afford to spend on a game, you're going to start looking and you're going to find things, especially if you have filters, you know, certain price ranges you're looking between. Every time something pops up, it's going to be enticing. One of my biggest downfalls is that I panic so I, I pay straight away because I think, well, I don't want anyone else to get that. The key here is that you need to do research. It doesn't take that long to do your research. But the problem here is FOMO. See, the fear of missing out is unbelievably strong. And like I said, I suffer from it myself. I'm too worried that someone else is going to jump in there. You're going to miss out. They're going to be the ones to profit from it. And then I'll be thinking about that for the rest of the day. So when it comes to buying and selling video games or collecting video games and you think that that Switch game is a really good deal, even with a fee, even with a postage, you think 15 quid for this game is really, really good. Maybe Amazon has a sale right now. Maybe the game isn't as, as expensive as you thought. Maybe there's an issue with that game that you haven't quite seen. Do your research. Look at all the pictures. Read the description at least twice, even if it is just one line that says very good condition. Read it because it might say not very good condition and your brain has just disregarded the first word. It happens. I've done it a lot. I was in TK Maxx the other day and I thought, oh, that chair is quite cheap, $59.99. Nope, look again, $599.99. Who was paying that? I'll never know, especially with a stain on it. But anyway, you have to read everything twice. You have to look at all the pictures twice and do your research. If you miss out on it, you miss out on it. Be as quick as you can. Try not to panic, of course. But if you miss out, there's always another deal right around the corner. In fact, sometimes you miss out and it was a good deal, but then in two or three minutes or two or three hours time, something else will pop up that's even better again and you'll be glad that you kept the money. Of course, the other thing is getting caught up in last minute FOMO for new releases. It's Wednesday. There's a new game out on Friday. Certain YouTubers have access to this game. They're posting content about it. It's not really a, a particularly big release or it's not a genre that I'm particularly interested in. But because I'm that bored or that impatient for the game that I'm waiting for that's not out for a few weeks time, I need something to plug the gap. I'm looking at these videos and I'm thinking, oh, I could kind of enjoy that for a couple of weeks. I'm going to really go and drop 60 quid on a game that I only really intend on playing for a couple of weeks, a game that wasn't on my radar before today, a game that I'm not really sure that I'm going to play past the first few days of release. No, stop it. Something that I've done in the past is actually to take like five quid to CEX or Cash Generator, Cash Converter, if you've got any of those type of stores around by you, go 
to one of those stores with a fiver. Look in the areas that you have consoles for, of course, so PlayStation 4 or Xbox 360, whatever you fancy playing at the time, or I fancy playing on my 360, fancy playing on my PS4, go look at those and only limit yourself to that £5. You may think, well, I've got most of the games, and if you're that type of collector where you, you have nearly everything at this point, then obviously just look at your shelves, don't go to CEX. But you'll waste a bit of time, really, in going out to look for this game in the first place. And then when you actually go and find a game, you think, well, do you know what, I'll give that a go. You've only spent five quid, so if you only spend the weekend or a week playing that game, you've only spent five. Whereas you would have gone and bought that new release that you didn't really want, but you're just buying it for the sake of it that would have cost you 60, 70 quid. It sounds stupid, but it actually does work. And sometimes I have more fun doing that because it's more of an experience to go out and look for the game. Because you, you go in there, you don't know what you want. I mean, you can look online, sure, but that kind of takes away a little bit of the fun. You go to CEX, you go to one of these other pawn shop type places, and you're looking through all the games and maybe you have to do a little bit of research there and there, or maybe you just eyeball the back cover and think, well, I'll give that a go. It's three, four, five pound. Why not? That's part of the experience. Getting home then, like back when I was a kid, used to read the instruction manual. Maybe you'll be thinking about what the game is all about. Maybe you remember seeing something in the past and you're trying to remember what it was. And then when you get home and pop that game in, you've got that sort of three, four, five days or a week or whatever it may be. The game that you were going to buy, that new release you were going to drop 60 quid on that you didn't even think that you really wanted, has been and gone. The FOMO of that will be over by now because people will be playing it and telling you that it's trash or you'll be thinking, well, I'm over it now. I've got this game for the time being. And then you'll be that one step closer to the game that you actually wanted in the first place. I don't have enough fingers and toes to list the amount of times I've given in to FOMO over the years. Most of the games came on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 when I worked in GameStation and games were just readily available. They would come in on the Tuesday ready to be released on the Friday and I just feel like I had to buy it. I had to have that game right now even though up until the point where it landed on the pallet at the back of the store, ready to be sorted through. I didn't even know it existed. But as soon as I saw it, oh, gotta buy that. Haze is a perfect game. We had promo for Haze for weeks before that thing came out on the PS3. Wasn't a good game. It came in. I didn't know anything about it. We had loads of promo shirts. We had big posters. We had the game itself. We had special editions. And I just caved instantly. Well, put one of them aside because I'm going to buy that. I think I played it for 20 minutes. Didn't enjoy it, but didn't trade it in or anything. Well, maybe I did trade it in, but obviously couldn't return it because I'd taken the cellophane off it at the time. It was a bit of a nightmare, and it happened nearly every single week. Luckily, I have restraint these days, but let me know in the comments a time that you didn't have restraint. You gave in to FOMO. Maybe you caved under the pressure of your friends. Maybe you were in that scenario where you were bored and you saw a new release coming out soon, even though you knew you didn't really want it. You bought it anyway. Give me an instance where you gave in to FOMO. If you'd like to check out a video from my game collection series, you can click here. And until the next time, goodbye.